I one. am very excited. And for all of you on the stream, uh, keep in mind, I will have the stream chat open. So if you have any predictions of things that you want to throw out right at the beginning, throw them in chat and I'll be happy to call you out on the stream and see if you are correct. Chaos, we're going to have a TVZ to start off here. One of my emerging favorite matchups, I think. Hmm. Very, very excited for it, and Legend is a player who is known to mech, especially in Z TVZ, so we'll have to see. I'm pretty excited about that. I, I really like seeing Legend's mech play, and we'll see if he goes ahead and gives us a taste. Yeah, that would definitely be a nice little treat. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> My computer was like, do I want to load or not? Oh, I was a little worried there. Oh, chaos, you're playing with my heart, you. Uh-oh. Something's going on. You tease, you. It says we're live. Everything's good. I just hope it doesn't screw up on me now. Okay, everybody. Hello, everybody. This is Chaos with Thunderdogs Esports bringing you tonight's Top Dog League series. This is week number five. We have Microgamers going up against Prometheus Gaming. Let's go ahead and introduce our first player spawning in the upper left-hand corner here on Dedulous Point. It is going to be Microgamers Legend. Take it away. Oh, and in the bottom right, we will have his opponent, Prometheus Gaming's Wannabe Sweet. And that is a great, great name. Have not seen that before. Wannabe Sweet, Chaos. I do, for sure. Now, I'm pretty sure, actually, I casted these guys uh, over on week three. I think he played a pretty good game, if I recall. We'll have to see. I don't remember exactly what the details were of that game, but I'm pretty sure it was awesome. So it's on the YouTube channel. Feel free to go check it out. All those links are down in the description if you're interested later. Right now, I need to turn on all of the funness that is the overlay. Oh, and yes. yeah, so... You said mech. Do you think we'll see mech on this map, specifically? I would believe... Yeah, I hope so. I'm such a fan of Legends mech play. He actually lost the last time that I casted him uh, for a team a skirmish against another clan, a clan war. But, yeah, I mean, if you look at the distance, you can defend with tanks. Uh, pretty much you can defend almost three locations, because if you put them right at the bottom of the ramp on the natural, you can kind of, you know, shoot into the natural, defend that ramp a little bit, and even get a little bit of the third. Certainly don't want to roast your workers or anything like that, but you can get at least have some defense, so you can make up for that immobility with just their massive range. Yeah, it does look like uh, Legend's going to go ahead and get that relatively early gas. That'll probably be... Uh, straight into a Reaper for some scouting and maybe a little bit of harassment. Uh, so, pretty normal opening. Nothing too different from any normal TVZ, so probably going to be focusing on getting out his expansion relatively quickly. Uh, and his, He's also going to go ahead. Already sent his SCV out to do a little bit of scouting. Going to see everything right so far. Yeah, it looks like Regrets1228 has been following Prometheus Gaming, telling us they are 2-0 and in their last two weeks. So there's a uh, little bit of uh, talk going on, saying that they should clean up. Microgamers, though, has definitely been a great team, adding on a lot of talent. Actually, Too Fast, their manager, hangs out a lot in our stream, etc. And he is always really excited about players that he gets. He's a manager that's certainly involved with this team a lot and uh, definitely likes calling out. They've added on a lot of really cool talent, and uh, he every time he comes in, he's so excited about some new prospects, some new players. So Microgamers is certainly a pretty good team in the scene right now. We'll have to see how Prometheus steps up. Yeah, so um, it's going to get some nice scouting information with the Reaper as it comes in, pretty much sees everything going on. Uh, a couple Zerglings there to meet it, so it's going to get denied for now. Um, but with appropriate micro, he should be able to uh, continue on doing a little bit of harassment. Uh, meanwhile, back at home, we do have the natural going down for Legend, so he's definitely going to be looking to get, you know, start getting his economy up. And then we also have a relatively quick factory, so this could be a pretty good sign that we might see um, pretty early Metavax. Actually, I'd say this kind of looks more like a um, uh, Widow Mind Drop type play. What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, we'll definitely have to see with one gas right there. He is building the reactor. Legend certainly enjoys his heli and her ass, so we'll have to see if he goes into that. Be interesting when he grabs the gases, not only in his main, but also at the natural, just to see if he's going to go into that heavy mech play. And just because he does favor mech doesn't mean he does it exclusively, as we now see that factory jumping over. So we'll have to see what he has planned. So, speed is about to be finished, so that'll give... Uh Want to be sweet? Some pretty good mobility to do a little bit of scouting. Uh, it actually looks like sh he wants to go ahead and take uh, his third base. Uh, definitely playing a little bit more yeah, bold. Yeah, third as uh, part of that giant ramp. I like the move, and certainly adding on a little bit more, going to wall up. And yeah, he's most certainly wants to get that third up very, very quickly. Now it all comes down to see if Want to be sweet will scout this, throwing down a third of his own. Now, but a Terran with a very fast third, you have to see when that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there really isn't an Overlord in a good enough position to actually scout that. We do have one Overlord at the very top there going to be uh, going in and scouting the Hellions, but he doesn't have one in position to actually look at the front of the ramp, so kind of an interesting place choice of placement for all of his buildings, kind of definitely being a little sneaky. <laughs> Yeah, we'll definitely have to see what he has been here, as now he did put that tech lab onto the starport. Going to be looking, and it looks like a Banshee's coming out, and you're just watching that gas and seeing if it drops down, if he's going to go with any sort of cloak, or some players just like to go Banshee's just for a little bit more meat. It really helps out against a Zerg player. Yeah, I mean, this really looks very similar to kind of the old school Wings of Liberty 111 build. Uh, you know, going for that Hellion Banshee mix. I don't know if he's going to throw in probably some more uh, Reapers with that, but I'd say it's looking pretty. going to be pretty strong, I would say. You can get in Cloak. And we'll have to see the Cloak is coming out. Lots of Hellions back there. I'm not quite sure what exactly we're going to see in the remainder here, but Legend actually getting oh, almost a good scout. He had an SCV that almost snuck up the Zerg's ramp, ran right by about eight Zerglings. Yeah, very, I, very sneaky SCV. Yeah, it definitely, at least it got the, you know, decent enough scout. Um, it did, I believe, catch the... No, it didn't catch the Roach Warren. Wow, it only got the Evo Chamber. So, yeah, so he doesn't really know that Roaches are what he's going to be up against. So, that's definitely going to put him at a little bit of a disadvantage because Roaches versus Hellions usually works out more in the Roach's favor, so Hellion's going to come in here and try and clean, clean up some of this creep, and we'll have to see whether or not this engagement's going to go well. Yeah, and it looks like he did definitely see the Roaches there, so he knows what he's up against, but with his third base coming in, looks like Wannabe Sweet does not know that the third base exists, and ignored it for right now, has not seen it, will it see it from the high ground, it looks like no, and correct me if I'm wrong, chaos but it looks like that has not been scouted at all yeah so he, he didn't he didn't scout the third but he pr did get a pretty good idea of what his opponent's doing uh those links pretty much got all the way into the main he's seen all of the gases go down except for the one on the far right hand side of the uh natural so he should know that he's gonna be up against some uh you know a mecking player and should b adjust his build accordingly well, you can only hope as not knowing that your player has a third down and functional can be a little bit rough, especially when you think they're going heavy aggression. So, you know, you build up some units to try to defend, and then all of a sudden, oh no, they've had a third this whole time, and they're macroing really hard. It can be very devastating, so we'll have to see if Wannabe Sweet can compensate for that. Somehow has to figure out exactly what's going on besides just the unit composition. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he's starting to get his upgrade advantage, which is... Ooh couple of those uh, Banshees, one of them going to get picked off, pretty much hit squad, <laughs> gone wrong. Um, but the upgrade advantage that he's going to have, he's already working on plus two, plus two, uh, is going to be really nice. The only thing is, is, you know, mech's pretty good, I mean, against a Roach Hydra composition, so it's going to be really interesting to see if the upgrade advantage will be enough for him to actually push through. Uh, you know, looking at the supply counts, he's actually behind in supply, which is kind of odd. You know, a lot of times you see, um, you know, Zerg players be 30-plus supply ahead of their opponent, uh, except for in the ZVZ matchup, but, um, you know, it's kind of really weird to see him, you know, kind of on the, on the backside. 
I will have to see here. It looks like loading up for a Hellbat drop. Can it come along the right side? We'll have to see if Wannabe Sweet, and he's got an Overlord right in the path. He should see that coming from a mile away. Nice little placement there. I like how he's patrolling both corners of the map, making sure no drops are going to come through without him knowing. Yeah, I definitely done a really good job of placing his Overlord in very strategic locations to scout those drops. Um, as you can see, you know, the lower left-hand corner, we've got one down there. He's moving another one kind of into that, what would be his fifth base position, or maybe sixth, depending on if he wants to take the upper right-hand corner one. Uh, but anyways, looks like the Hydras will start to move in and, you know, kind of fend off the medevac. But overall, things are looking pretty good for Wannabe Sweet as he is just, you know, mackering up. Yeah, that was actually a great reaction time by Legend. That Hydras are charging really fast on creep, and he just expertly yanked that thing away with the boost very, very quickly. And both these players, Chaos, uh, I don't know if it's just a respect thing back and forth, but really not poking or prodding at each other very much. I mean, besides the random Hellions running into one of B Sweet's army, you know, very, very respectful. <laughs> so, um... Drop looks like it wants to come in once again, and ooh, some nice Vikings going to be picking off some of those overlords that are being pesky, but looks like the Viking might get picked off. So, what are your predictions as far as the final end battle? I mean, are we really going to be seeing only a Roach Hydra, now Viper, composition coming in here? Or do you think that there's going to be some type of round out to this composition? Because obviously only having tier 2 units, or a tier 2 unit composition, uh, you're going to be a little bit lacking against those Thors. Uh, tanks, maybe not as much, but definitely the Thors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to start looking at possibilities here. And right now, in Legend very smartly only has two Thors because he didn't see any sort of threat of Mutalisks. Uh, which is great for him. That means he can add on, you know, more of those tanks, more Hellbats. But he always has to be worried about transitions because if he can get enough Mutas to, you know, kill the two Thors, the rest of this army is kind of just, you know, they're out to dry. And I'll we'll have to see with this fourth base, kind of the new thing uh, that's kind of been occurring in this matchup is you'll transition from this Hellbat tank Thor combo to actually a lot of air. And you actually see this Overlord, this is how little anti air he is, he can't even kill it. Uh, the Thors finally came over and start shooting it down, but we'll have to see if he transitions into a Starport-based army or just stays factory-based and big and beefy. Yeah, I mean, so the Ultralist Cavern did just get planted down, which is which I think is a is a good, you know, good moving into what he the composition that he's going to want, but. Yeah, definitely, if he does do that transition into the start poor tech, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to actually, you know, come back and do something else, just because he has not been focusing on getting out any air units besides the Vipers. And we'll have to see, I mean, if he had something, uh, like Mutas might be good to see. If he, he can yank those Thors out, there's just going to be nothing anti-air left at all. I mean, they can be obliterated, so it doesn't look like he's planning on doing that. It looks like an Ultralis Cavern is coming up. We'll have to see both these players, their tech switches from here on out are going to be vitally important. Okay, so it does look like he wants to try and deny this fourth base. He is going to go ahead and back out a little bit with those tanks uh, setting up. Uh, he's going to try and get a good enough concave. Concave's looking pretty good, but the question is, is, is there enough? Uh, Legend is pretty much holding on with those tanks. They are looking pretty good. And oh, and those blinding clouds were devastating. They actually took most of the tanks out of the fight. Unfortunately, I didn't get to clean those up, but I was wondering, Chaos, you said that, I mean, you were correct, they were in a great position, but they weren't doing the damage, and then all of a sudden I look back, blinding cloud on all of them. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, with this many tanks, there's not really much that Wannabe Sweet can actually do to deny this base, so this base is going to get up and get running. Uh, he is gonna, he's already turned it into a planetary force race, so it's already going to be really difficult for him to uh, get in there without losing some units himself. And I'll be curious to see what he really wants to do. Does he want to actually try and deny that? Or does he really want to just go straight for the production? You know, pretty much the entire army of Legend is sitting at that fifth base. So it's like, if he really wanted to, he could totally just walk up, waltz into the natural, and he, there's really nothing <laughs> he could do. And he's going to have to be very aware of where that army is. And with so many... Of the planetary, or excuse me, the orbital commands going around, he should definitely 
Happy scanning, making sure he has an eye on that army at all times. I like the sensor tower that he just put down at that uh, fourth base. So we are going to see what happens here as all these ultralisks, eight of them now, are looking kind of scary, but really it comes down to the angle of this engagement. Yeah, so he's trying to put himself into a decent enough position, but he really... I mean, he really hasn't scouted anything. He just now walks into the planetary fortress and says, Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to just chill out now. <laughs> yeah, Legend walling this up, uh, kind of creating some blockages with these uh, barracks, which is a nice little move for him because that just restricts these ultras so much. They need to get deep inside before they can start doing damage. And he's got a good spread on the tanks and Legend looking really good right now and now two spires going down with wannabe sweet i think he knows the transition that he wants to make yeah and it's kind of interesting so we we've got three barracks coming down uh, this this can't be for a transition into bio you think uh no and actually he looks like he is going to go up into a battle cruiser sorry to cut you off because he just threw down a fusion core Ah, okay, so we are going to see that tech switch over into air, uh, which is actually what uh, Wannabe Sweet has already done. Two spires are down in the back of the na in the main, so he's definitely already kind of queuing up for those either Mutus switch or kind of that Corruptor Broodlord. Uh, to see, ooh, a great snatch on those banshees, and he actually gets him away. I'm not sure if you caught that. There was banshees were knocking down that hatchery, and at the last moment, the vipers came in and yanked three of them away. That hatchery surely would have died. And now the SCVs are poking away at the creeps, trying to deny it a little bit by a little bit. Uh, looks like Legend is saying, you know, all these SCVs are kind of cutting into my army. And definitely, and when you have a big mech army with so many orbital commands, you really want to cut down on the workers so you can get a really, really beefy count of just units. And you can see the SCV train now going over. So he's going to sacrifice. It's going to allow him to get a lot of units. Yeah, I mean, there's a good, I don't know, 16 SCVs right there. So it's definitely going to free up some supply, get a handful of more uh, Vikings and Ravens, it appears to be. Uh, and it looks like the rest of the SCVs are going to start to poke at some of these <laughs> drones. I'm loving right now the one swarm host that's assaulting relentlessly the fourth base of Legend. Wannabe Sweet has just one swarm host, just tossing in some locusts, making sure that, you know, Legend is pretty much just annoyed. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting little technique. He's going to poke a little bit at a time. Uh, but obviously isn't really going to accomplish a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure an SCV is going to stop over there once every couple of minutes to make sure, but now Planetary Fortress and even more SCVs are being sacrificed now, and Legend is kind of ignoring them, at least for the time being. Yeah, Legend's He's just down trying... to 61 SCVs. Yeah, Legend's just sitting here picking off drones left and right uh, over here at the, I guess, 4th and 5th, but it does look like Wannabe Sweet wants to go ahead and engage this now. He is moving in, and tanks are going to go ahead and go. we got a decent enough surround on the Planetary Fortress, and it looks like he's going to be in a decent enough position. The question is, is, is there going to be enough, and do the tanks get into position in time? Ultralis going in and doing a lot of damage, and it does look like there is enough. Oh, he's going back in! What is he doing?! Tanks. Yeah, we're a little confused, but it looks like he's doing pretty well thus far. Yeah, the blending clouds are very, very well executed on, on those tanks, and it does look like he's going to have enough to push in here. But with those Hellbats, I think that is going to be enough to drive him back. Definitely a very, very interesting engagement right there. Um, Legends is actually below in supply, so I'd say overall, pretty decent engagement. Want to be sweet, leaving a lot of things there to just kind of be roasted. And I think he wants to go, and there are the Corruptors. Uh, I think he just wants to kind of get back into this and really do a massive switch. 25 Corruptors, and you got to wonder, with a 6,000, 3,000 bank, how many are Broodlords? And it sounds like a lot. Massive tech switch coming down here. Yeah, 9 Broodlords coming out on the way. 14 more Corruptors. He's definitely going to have an air army that is very formidable. Now, the only downside is his upgrades on his air units really aren't that special. Uh, if you notice before, the all the Vikings are at 3-3, three, three, where as those Broodlords and Corruptors are simply at plus one, well, they will soon be at plus one, plus one. 
Yeah, and now with Battle Cruisers who'd up, he's got three of them on the way, three to six, depending on how many he's going to get out by the time, and tons of Vikings, and this is following exactly both these players knew exactly where they wanted to be and both made that switch into air and I mean we were kind of talking about it as in you know the player who might go air might win but I didn't really anticipate both of them picking each other out so well they both made the switch at the same time yeah it's kind of interesting so since they both made the switch it's gonna really boil down to that upgrade count and then the ooh, a nice little drop going in there <laughs> I guess he just wants to get rid of some of those units and start getting his air units up um, and the battle cruisers are here. Oh, and a big engagement going down. So many seeker missiles, they connect. Oh, a couple of them do, and that was some massive damage to this stuff. Yeah, with this many Vikings, he's just able to take down those brood lords left and right, and with the, um, the point defense drones, obviously the corruptors are more or less <laughs> left to be useless. And now, as we saw, I was just going to comment before that engagement that he did start researching melee attacks number three, and he's switching into Ultralist, but with the number of battle cruisers, I'm wondering how effective it's going to be. I'm, I like the, the choice to try something new, but I'm just not quite sure how well it'll work. Yeah, I mean, 11 Ultralists is going to be definitely formidable. I mean, let's, let's look at the unit count. Uh, we've got 10 tanks out, so... As long as he can not be in a position where all the tanks are, I think he's going to be okay. Uh, just look like Legend wants to go ahead and start to nice up these bases as well as split off a... Oh, actually, he's sacrificing the tanks. So tanks are going to come in here, see the Ultra List, and be like, Oh, yeah, maybe maybe this was a bad mission. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have sacrificed these because that's a good amount of Ultra List. As they continue to come in... And yeah, Legend is actually letting a lot of these Ravens get a little bit low, and now he's pushing in, and he uh, took a piece out of the army, now he's fighting on two sides here. I cannot believe this. My computer is <laughs> just absolutely choppy. There's so many units, so many things going on, and it looks like the Ultralists are going to come in here and try to deny a little bit of mining at the 4th. Uh, and it looks like that will definitely get denied here very shortly. Now Vikings being landed, Wannabe Sweet sees it, and now it's going to start cheering through him. That can actually help a new Corruptor switch be really effective. So we'll have to see, Legend just lost a lot of Vikings to that. Yeah, but at the same time, pretty much all of the Ultralists are dead, uh, leaving only a, you know, a bunch of Lings, and it looks like the rest of these Corruptors are going to fall to this army, and it looks like... Legend is going to be able to push through this. He is currently now only up by 20 or 30 supply. Wannabe Sweet has a little bit of a bank. Seems like his goal is, I'm going to make what you're bad against right at this very moment. Now just flooding Lings in. Uh, more Ultralists coming in. I think he just wants to keep tech switching. But Legend has a pretty good composition. Yeah, I mean, at this point, let's see. Looking at the units count, there's really... Nothing that can attack air besides queens, which isn't going to be very good in the long term. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it to see him maybe go in festers here. If you can land a couple of fungals with the grouping on all of these ravens and vikings, you can do just such massive damage. Yeah, but we'll have to see his legends going on the offensive now. Yeah, it looks like he's going to land some of these vikings and start to take out a lot of these creep tumors and uh, minimize the amount of vision that one of these sweets got. Um, but he's definitely in a really good position to actually push through here. Some nice, uh, <laughs> nice auto turrets getting sent down to take out the uh, <laughs> take out the ultralist. And whoa, lots of mutas. Yeah, and we'll have to see is this the right switch? Is the you know the age-old question is which switch will be the one? You see the clumping. I would love to see an investor in here. Yeah, I mean that kind of was the unit to make. I think at this point. The, while having a ton of mutas to come in here and do damage is great, uh, I think he's going to just le leave some points of French turns down, and that should be enough. So mutas are coming in here trying to do a bunch of damage. <laughs> the battle cruisers are Yamato cannoning, and it looks like Legend is going to take this first game. Yeah, I think the mutas just were not quite enough damage. So, um, yeah, so I've got music. If you... any.